Everyone wants to give their child a unique name to separate them from the crowd. This name then becomes the first ever identity with which a child will be recognized. Most people develop a personal connection with this identity for the rest of their life. But does that name actually have any effect on who a person is and who they can become? According to the face name effect, also known as the Dorian Gray effect, the answer is yes. The phenomenon named after Oscar Wilde's eponymous hero, where his deeds affect his portrait on the wall, states that external labels such as a name have an internal effect on self-worth, confidence, grooming habits, and aesthetic choices. The physical appearance of that person is what is perceived by others, which further affects the person's own self-image and self-worth. Psychologists see this relationship between the internal factors and the external as the main component in the development of the person and their psyche. To test if one's name has a Dorian Gray effect on a person's personality, researchers from Hebrew University in Jerusalem performed a study that was published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. The paper aptly titled We Look Like Our Names explores the significance of how social judgments of a name can positively or negatively impact self-perception. This is the opposite of most research in the field, which looks at how appearances influence social perception. Social tags have been shown in the past to have an influence on people. One example would be teachers that put down certain students with harsh labels create a self-fulfilling prophecy of antisocial behavior. However, a name is the ultimate social tag, something that most people don't even choose, and it is more important to one's identity than just about anything else. The researchers at Hebrew University conducted eight different studies in two different countries with different cultural settings to test out their hypothesis. During each study, the test subjects were shown pictures of strangers and five possible name options. Each participant was asked to match the correct name to the face, the name that they thought fit the person's facial appearance. For this example, Dan was chosen 38% of the time, which is greater than a 1 in 4 random choice. Dan was actually his real name as well. Ethnicity, age, and socioeconomic variables for each picture were controlled by the researchers to achieve the most accurate results. This variable control ensured that the test subjects were picking names for the pictures purely based on the facial traits. In each of the studies, test subjects were up to 40% accurate in identifying the name of the person in the picture. When asked about the phenomenon, the lead author of the study, Dr. Swebner, said that when people hear a name, they visualize a face in their mind based on cultural stereotypes and characteristic traits. According to the study, people are often statistically accurate to a degree that cannot be considered just pure chance or coincidence. He also added that this perception of others is especially important because the way one is perceived, even if the perception is only based on a name, affects one's own personality. Most people will develop their personality around how others perceive to live up to their expectations. Zebrowitz in 2011 identified that our facial features actually change over the years to eventually represent our internal expectations of how we should look. For the average person, this may be in dressing a certain way, a change in grooming habits, or a greater propensity to change things about yourself surgically. From Albert Morabian's 2001 paper, we know that social attributes are interpreted from names. With seven trials and multiple repeats, each with a moderate sample size, men's names connoted more masculine characteristics, less ethical caring, and more successful characteristics than did women's. Nicknames connoted less successful characteristics, more popularity and fun, and less ethical caring characteristics than did given names. Androgynous names were more popular and fun, but less masculine for men and more masculine for women. Less conventionally spelled names connoted uniformly less attractive characteristics. For men only, longer names connoted more ethical and caring characteristics, but less popularity and fun. And lastly, more anxiety and neuroticism were attributed to those with less common names. The choice of name has real social consequences. A 2004 paper on distinctively black names by Fryer and Levitt found that blacks in white neighborhoods chose more anglicized names versus their black neighborhood counterparts. As a confounding effect of that, more anglicized black names were found to be easier to pronounce for the English-speaking workplace, which provided a socioeconomic boost. Following from that, Lehem et al.'s 2012 paper found merit to the name pronunciation effect, where easier to pronounce names reflect more favorably on appearances, perceived workplace status, and socioeconomic status. 
The results were independent of the length of the name or unusualness, typicality or foreignness, indicating that easy phonetic pronunciation of a name seems to be the most important quality in choosing one. This particular research paper is an anglicised example using Asian international students in Australia and domestic Australian students, but similar effects were found in other parts of the world in different languages. What might be difficult to an English speaker might be very easy to pronounce for a non-English speaker, and so that would be rated more favourably to them, and vice versa. The underlying mechanism comes from the research in processing fluency, where the subjective experience of ease or difficulty that is associated with a cognitive process is linked to positive or negative emotions. Think of it as that little dopamine rush that you get when you pronounce a difficult name like Sersha correctly. You automatically like that person a little bit more for giving you that positive feeling. The phonological fluency or ease of pronunciation isn't just limited to names. Alter et al's 2006 paper applied this to the local stock market, finding easier names to perform better in the short term, and similarly drugs with easier to read names were deemed as less risky. If you google the industry name for a drug versus the trade name, then you'll notice that the trade name is almost always much simpler. So what is the right name for a face? Well, typically people identify individuals by either their face or their name, leading to what's known as a face name prototype. A Dan Sheriff would look very different to a Liu Ming, and whether we've met a Dan or a Liu, within seconds of hearing those names, we've already developed an idea of what they might look like based on previous facial data and experiences. It could be why difficult or unusual names are less preferred from Moravian study, which we previously mentioned, because they provide no facial stereotype to go off of, leading to a subtle fear of the unknown. When choosing the right name, Kohler's 1929 paper identified what's known as the shape name fit, which itself is based on the Bubakiki effect, where the match between an object and a name is not completely arbitrary and some names just sound off, whether it be for a person or an object. This deserves to be a topic on its own, but if I were to show you these two images, which one would be Buba and which one would be Kiki? These are both nonsensical words, but we attribute a certain name to a certain shape more than the other. Lee et al's 2007 paper on this topic used the examples of names such as Bob having a rounder sound while also being a nickname of Robert, and so participants expect a more laid back, passive face. Unsurprisingly, most people were able to correctly guess out of these two faces. These were the majority agreed upon names for a collection of morphed faces in this study. From another trial, it was found that when these name matches were more and more mismatched, for instance, an Andy, who we expect to have a narrow face, being labelled as a Justin with a broad face, participants had considerably more difficulty in remembering the name correctly. Another interesting nuance is that when these participants are allowed to label the faces with their own selection of names from this given pool of names, they were actually much faster and better at recalling versus when the researchers gave them a randomised set of name-face pairs. To summarise, there is strong evidence of face name prototypicality. Virtually every human being expects to look a certain way, and when they don't match up, we have difficulty in remembering and associating the face. The choice of name has significant social importance from workplace discrimination to socioeconomic success, and in general easier to pronounce names, names that are phonetically pronounced how they are spelt, whether it be anglicised, ethnic or other, are more preferred irrespective of their length or commonality. The face name effect is so prevalent that artificial intelligence algorithms can predict names far more accurately than humans can by finding commonalities in faces with the same name. Regression analysis of the results show that the eyes and greater periocular region is the most determinant factor that the computer algorithm uses to assign a name. As for growing into your name, Zwebner et al's paper suggests it is only a self-fulfilling prophecy when there are facial features that one can control, most commonly being your hairstyling and body modifications. On this self-fulfilling prophecy theory, there is also an element of bias that we need to consider. For instance, Conrad is a fairly waspy Caucasian name, and so a child with that name would be more socially acclimated in the West, likely coming from a privileged family, 
and would be expected to uphold traditions of involvement in sport, such as American football or rugby as it is here. This leads to frequent exercise, social development, health access and higher testosterone in general, which is responsible for growing into a wider, more masculine face during adolescence. Perhaps the name had nothing to do with it, but rather it is simply a product of selection bias. <laughs>